Morning, y'all. Right, today we're going to do Paul Casey's swing. Lucky enough to film with Paul a couple of weeks ago, last week, whatever it was. Really nice guy, actually. It was quite interesting. Three of the guys who often get the worst press, so maybe Daphna, Bubba, and Paul a little bit, were arguably the three nicest and the three funniest. Sometimes I feel like people's sense of humour is maybe just get a little bit lost. Like, it doesn't always have to be just about please and thank you to be known as what is kind of polite or friendly. So we're gonna do Paul Casey swing. Let's see what we can learn from this potential Ryder Cup player. There's a part of me that kind of hopes he does make it because he is a fantastic golfer. If you're liking the swings and you're liking the compares, we've got more to do. I think we should do Jordan at some point. I've got some footage of his swing. But, uh, hit the thumbs up button down there below. Let me know if you want me to have a look at Jordan's swing as well. Um, I could try. I'm not sure if he's allowed to or not, but we could try. Hit the thumbs up button down below. Let me know or post a comment. We could try and get Cameron McCormack to comment on it as well, his coach. That could be fun, couldn't it? Should we do that? Let me know down there. Right, should we take a look at Paul's swing? So if we look at the front on view, Paul's very standard in his setup, which I like to see. He does have verging on a slightly stronger maybe left hand grip quite hard to tell in this picture but it's certainly not strong um, uh, and definitely never on the weaker side now moving back into his backswing first parallel good stretch back he's really creating width and stretching his arms back a long way which is interesting to see with all of these golfers trying to get really i mean his hands aren't quite as high as maybe some of the others but they're as far away from him as he can physically get them bearing in mind his right arm is bent pretty good extension he turns pretty much on top of the ball as well. Now what's interesting with Paul's downswing and impact and through the ball, he looks at, so he hits this one slightly out of here, it's a bit blurry, but you can see the face turning. I remember the shot, he was warming up and he didn't like the feel of this one. He has a little bit of a sliding left knee. So he's not the going kind of really firming up the left side kind of a player. He does kind of just slide into it a little bit with his left knee and he looks to me a little bit like someone who's trying to always manage maybe a ball over drawing we did a challenge with a driver and i said to him you have to hit a certain shot and he he basically was saying that i people don't normally use that term related to my golf which was about trying to hit it accurately with the driver so i think he can leave it out to the right and maybe overturn it i would guess at with his action now if we look from the other angle so again, we see a good setup, nice spine angles and posture angles that he creates. He's a little bit overbent in his knees, maybe first swing of the day possibly, but it's certainly not uh, a problem in any way. Um, then going back, what we see, he starts with everything that his shoulders are aiming fractionally close. He sets up almost like he wants to draw it. Um, he takes the club back. You can see it just getting slightly under his hands. So he, he definitely looks like he wants to draw it. Fantastic top of the back swing position. Hips turning, I like the way the right knee isn't maintaining its flex. Look, it straightens up a little bit, which you'll see with all good golfers. It's one of those kind of myths that we grew up with. People still go on about. Uh, now this is what's interesting with Paul, as well as he comes in and hit the ball, you can see the face pointing slightly more down at the ground maybe than some other golfers, just a fraction more, that's the face probably going to be slightly close to a path, get that shape, that draw shape, and we see a slight stalling with his hips and a big movement with his arms and his body going through, so it's kind of like... His hips almost want to stop on the way through and he's not afraid to chase it a little bit with his arms. And this is why I think he worries about not hitting target all the time. Certainly, again, not a fault or anything I would look at changing, but if he wanted some weapons to maybe calm the overturn down and have a gaming shot that he can get in play, which he probably already has already got, but if he didn't, we'll talk about, we could talk about a few ideas that he could do to try and just change that sequence a little bit through impact to get rid of like the, the big miss that he fears, he obviously fears that he kind of hinted at when we filmed. Uh, let's show you what I mean. So the other thing that we see from 
Paul that we didn't mention indoors is he's got this funny follow through. You watch closely with Paul, he's got a follow through action, but he gets quite tilted with his upper body as he slides his lower half underneath him, so forward underneath him with a bit of rotation, but it's still slightly. We then see a follow through where we see his, see that movement with Casey? So it's quite a distinct kind of impression action that he does that little lean forwards. And I think lots of that's a product of his lower half wanting to slide out from underneath him which gives his upper half maybe a bit more tilt. He turns with that tilt which kind of gets him to a point and then just to go that little bit further and save his back we have that little kind of pump forwards. And that's all that product of him trying to control the club face, doing everything he can to try and make sure the face isn't doing this too much, so pointing left of whatever path he's swinging on and getting any big overturns. And obviously with his slightly stronger grip and we see the face slightly turning down, it's a great way, as he proves, to manage it. And the other thing you've got to remember, so it's noticeable how big his arms are, people talk about it and you can see, he's super, super strong, he's got no lack of speed, he hits the ball plenty of distance, so when he's on, he's going to be able to take courses apart. Another thing I noticed with his game, which if you watch the video I did on the day, he had no hybrid, three iron I think, might have been two iron, three iron or two iron was his longest iron, and then he went to a three wood. That kind of really old school, strong, kind of strong swingers golf bag, not trying to get any help in there. If I remember correctly, the three iron was quite bladey as well. So really for Paul, I think you would work on trying to get him to just activate his lower half if he wanted that kind of go-to fairway finding shot that he might feel he might not even be able to get quite the distance that he normally gets, but he just has to hit fairway. You know, you would think a lot more about starting a downswing by trying to get him to open up, feeling like his left leg is almost coming back and up more rather than the slide. And like I said at the start, he probably already does this. He's got a four and obviously he's not showing me it on this eight time warm up shot. Um, I'm just saying for any of you out there who see similarities in your action, these are things you could just try and move to give you another shot, to give you something that helps you find fairway when you need it, which is about turning around that left side a lot more, opening up shoulder, opening up chest, feeling almost like you're holding off on the way through so I held off follow through. We're getting rid of the tilt, slide and flips that can plague some golfers. But remember, I'm not saying this is a fault. Paul is a highly successful skilled golfer. You know, it's only with players like this, if they ask the question, that you might choose to go down this route. Because there's no questions to be asked. Keep winning the money, keep winning the tournaments, keep getting the sponsorship deals. Everything he's doing is working for him, isn't it? And that's what's important, I hope, from all of these videos I'm doing and a take home for you. You will have stuff that works that people might not like to look off and comment on. That doesn't mean you should stop doing them. So I think Paul's a great example of a golfer who gets the best out of what he brings. He uses his power to the utmost. He uses lots of good technique and happy to look to me to shape the ball I mean, I reckon he shapes it both ways, but he's happy to move it his preferred way. Even though there is a slight stall of the hips and possibly a rotation of the arms and club through the ball, it's a very simplistic, good-looking action, one that lots of people could learn from. And he's a strong, powerful-looking guy, and that comes through. You stand next to him, watch him hit shots, and, you know, they are fizzing off. He is giving it an almighty wallop. And one of the standout points for me with Paul was how nice he was, how funny he was, and engaging when I leave it to the press to give me an opinion, or I form my, my opinion semi through what the press are delivering, and that's not the Paul I was expecting. Which I it's been, in all the players I met, I think that was quite interesting. Will he make Ryder Cup? Should he play Ryder Cup? Should he be picked? Go on down there, let me know. What do you think? It's a great, powerful, simplistic swing. He's played Ryder Cup before. He's got proven track record as a world-class player. I, for one, would love to see him make it or get picked and play and compete. I'm going to the Ryder Cup. I'd love to watch him play there. Um, let me know what you think. See you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Post comments down below. As always, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, all those things. Um, we've got Journey student Alexis coming down tomorrow. Weather permitting, we're going out to play at Dawlish Warren Golf Club. 
Um, it should be a lot of fun. I think it'll surprise him how tough that course is, certainly if the wind blows compared to maybe some of the other courses. Um, but Journey students, now I'm back from holiday and they're all back from their trips, all starting up again. We've got two or three months left of Journey students to see if we can push them as low as possible. I think Alexis is, we'll find out tomorrow, but I think his society handicap is almost down to seven at the moment. So he is making some fantastic improvements, which is great to see. See you all tomorrow.